What's going on smart people? Everyone loves the small angle approximation. It's the most memeable approximation to date. And if you don't get it, you're missing out on at least pi squared percent of all memes on the physics meme subreddit. And you know, I'm, I'm gonna level with you. I, I haven't been sleeping much lately. Just thinking about these poor people who don't even get the meme. How, how scared they must be. No, no tools, no tools of calculus to comfort them. So this video, it's, it's more than just raising awareness. That only gets you so far. No, I, um, I have a chance to make a difference today. So I'm gonna tell you about this little golden nugget, if you will, in physics and engineering. I'm going to tell you what it is where it comes from, and how and when to wield this power. So let's begin. The thousand and one mile journey begins by approximating it as 1,000 miles. So let's embark on this journey together. Okay, so this is what we want to consider today. It's the small angle approximation. Sine of theta is approximately theta. And in order to truly understand it, you have to be familiar with the concept of a Taylor series. Taylor series was founded by Taylor Taylorson and I think around 1738, uh, who by profession was a tailor. And he realized that you don't need to know precisely the dimensions of a person's body in order to find clothing that fits them approximately. An approximate solution will do. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you, I have no idea where he came up with it, but we do need the idea of a Taylor series. Now I'm about to write down the equations for the Taylor series, but first I wanna talk about before I was making this video, I had to consider who the people are that are unfamiliar with this approximation. It's going to be people who either aren't very far in physics, aren't very far in math, little column A, little column B. It's a safe bet that they would have little to no knowledge of calculus. So I'll show you the equation for the Taylor series, but rather than proving it, which would require calculus that you might not know, I'll demonstrate graphically how it works. The main idea behind the Taylor series is if you have some function where everything is kosher at a specific point, you can recreate the function by considering a bunch of what are called derivatives at that point scaled to a certain degree. So we're going to make that point be zero. Some people call that the Maclaurin series. I say, no, you don't get your own series just because you let a equal zero. Okay, so f of x, what I just said is we can recreate a function by considering the sum of a bunch of different order degree derivatives at that point. If this makes no sense to you, just, just bear with me. It'll start to make sense once we just reconstruct it in a graph. Okay, so f of x is the function evaluated at that point. We're gonna let that point be zero, plus x divided by one factorial f prime of zero. I'm just writing the factorial just to make it more suggestive, plus x squared over 2 factorial f double prime of 0 plus x cubed over 3 factorial f triple prime of 0. Well, you get the idea. This goes on forever, by the way. And if you let this go on forever, you will exactly recreate the function. Now, you can get an estimate of what the function looks like if you truncate this at a certain point. You can get something that looks roughly like the function. Uh, now, a more compact way of writing this is we could say that f of x is equal to the sum, we'll let it sum over n, equals 0 to infinity of, let's say, x to the n over n factorial f to the nth derivative evaluated at 0. Maybe I should say x evaluated at 0. It would be better. What the hell does that mean? Just to be super explicit, this is the Taylor series of f centered at x equals zero. If it wasn't that, then this would change a little bit, but that's not too important for this approximation. Cool, and really what this comes down to, this is just a number, this is just a number, this is just a number, all of these are just numbers. So what this comes out to is we're expressing some function in terms of a number of times a polynomial. That's the beauty of the Taylor series, is it takes some arbitrarily complicated function and expresses it in terms of just a polynomial. Cool, so this is the Taylor series. The next step 
is we want to find out what this Taylor series is, where f of x instead is just f of theta. So instead of x's, we have thetas, and it's equal to sine of theta. We want to expand this, okay? So we're interested in f of theta equal to theta, equal to sine of theta. How do we expand that? Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of taking derivatives of functions, you can go ahead and skip to this section of the video. All I'm going to be doing is calculating what these terms are, so these are derivatives of sine, and then substituting it in where theta is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and calculate these derivatives. So f of theta equals sine of theta, that means that f of theta evaluated at zero is equal to zero. So this is actually just our first term, it's the function evaluated at zero. Then f prime of theta evaluated at zero is equal to cosine theta at zero, which is one f double prime theta zero is equal to minus sine of theta at zero, which is zero again. And we'll, let's just do one more. f triple prime of theta evaluated at zero is equal to minus cosine theta at zero, which is equal to minus one. And now we can just calculate what these terms are, but instead we're going to be using thetas instead of x's. So this is just equal f of zero is equal to zero, so we have sine of theta is equal to zero plus theta times f prime of zero, which is one, so it's just theta, plus theta squared over two, f double prime of zero, f double prime at zero is zero, times zero, so that's just zero, plus theta cubed over three factorial, f triple prime, which is gonna give us a minus one, so this sign is just going to become negative. And you can kind of see a pattern here. The even terms go to zero, and the odd terms alternate signs. So the next one would be theta to the fifth over five factorial minus theta to the seventh over seven factorial plus dot dot dot. Clean this up just a little bit. We have our final Taylor series expansion for sine of theta. It's equal to theta minus theta cubed over 3 factorial plus theta to the fifth over 5 factorial minus dot dot dot. Now, if you skip to this part of the video because you were unfamiliar with Taylor series, all we showed is that through the Taylor series we could express sine of theta as this polynomial that has an infinite number of terms in it where we have this pattern plus, minus, plus, minus, so on and so forth, where we increase by powers of 2 the even terms go to zero. Uh, and you need all infinite number of terms in order for it to perfectly match with sine of theta. If you don't include all infinite number of terms, if you stop at a certain point, well then you'll have some error in your approximation. It will be an approximation, I should say. Since including more and more terms of the series gives us a better and better approximation to sine of theta, are there values of theta such that only including the very first term in this series gives me a good enough approximation. Another concern that you might have is you might not be convinced that this at all starts to look like sine of theta. So let's take a moment to compare sine of theta to this polynomial expansion as we start to include more and more terms. Does it actually start to look like this function? One important thing to keep in mind is that whatever I call the argument on the inside, it all represents the same thing. This is the same thing as if I were to say sine of x is equal to x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial dot dot dot. It's, it's representing the same thing so long as the argument on the inside is dimensionless, it doesn't matter. So if you see y equals theta, it's nothing funny happens because I'm calling it theta. It's still going to be a 45 degree line. Minus theta cubed over three is still going to look something like this. So, so don't let that trick you. What you're seeing now is a plot of y equals sine of theta and y equals theta. And they look pretty different. But if we add the next term of this series, that looks a little bit better. 
we add the next term of the series, that looks even better. And that pattern goes on and on. As we add more and more terms of the series, this polynomial starts to look exactly like a sine wave. Like I said, you just need an infinite number of them. Let's go back to just considering the first term. Let's just go back to looking at sine of theta approximately equal to theta. Now I know at first glance it doesn't really look like a sine wave, but that's because we're looking at a very wide range of angles. But let me just look at this. Here's our sine wave. From here, if we plot our x here and we only consider a smaller range of angles, we go from zero to some, some theta here, well, that actually does capture it pretty well. I know from here on, it starts to diverge. It starts to look like a bad approximation. But for small angles of theta, we can get away with that. We can get away with this approximation. So we can get away with this small angle approximation for sufficiently small angles. The next question is, what is a sufficiently small angle? Five, one, point one? On top of that, if someone were to tell you one, one is a small angle, is that in radians or degrees? Does it matter? What's the difference between one degree and one radian? If we were to just draw a graph where the x-axis corresponds to angles, I mean, Where's, where is one radian? Is that, is that here? That's, that's small. Well, think about it. Think about it for a second. I'm going to draw a circle real quick. To go all the way around a circle, you know that you have to go 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. In other words, 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. So if we divide both sides by 2 pi, we get that 1 radian is equal to 360 over 2 pi, or 180 over pi. Pi, pi is about 3.14, whatever. So that's approximately 57 degrees, or approximately, let's just call that like 60 degrees. So 1 radian, it's not just here. It's all, it's all the way like up here. That's kind, of a, that's kind of a large angle. I mean, it depends on the problem that you're solving, but that's not as small as you might think. Making progress. So there's roughly 57 degrees in one radian. We can divide both sides by 57. Get that there's roughly one over 57 radians is equal to, approximately equal to one degree. Okay, and for perspective, this is about uh, 0 0.0174 radians. So which one do you use? Which one's more common to use? Well, I like to think about it in terms of the circumference of a circle, the calculations. Uh, the circumference of a circle, we all know, is 2 pi r, right? 2 pi radians times r. We don't say it's 360 degrees times r. You could if you wanted to specify degrees, but for calculations, you almost always use radians because it's easier to take multiples of pi than it is to take multiples of 360. Right? What's 5 times pi? Well, it's 5 pi. What's 5 times 360? Give me a minute. But for me, it's easier to picture angles in terms of degrees, but it's easier to do calculations in terms of radians. Fantastic. So we've established that using degrees versus radians makes a big difference. We're going to be doing calculations using the small angle approximation, so let's use radians. But that still leaves the question of what is a small angle? What is a small radian? We already know that as we decrease the angle, the approximation becomes better and better. You know, if we were to use uh, theta equals pi, well, sine of pi is equal to zero, and zero really isn't that close. I don't know what the not very close sign is, but it's not very close to pi, depending on the problem you're solving. If we were to use theta equal to pi over three, that's 60 degrees, well, sine of 60 degrees, so pi over 3, is root 3 over 2, which is about 0 0.86 whatever. And pi over 3, that's going to be a little bit over 1, so pi over 3 is about, I know I'm approximating an approximation, get off my back, fight me, uh, is about 1.04, and that's closer. You know, it depends on how, how much error you're willing to accept. So what is a small angle? Well, it's everyone's favorite answer. It depends. If someone says, I'm looking for an angle that gives me an approximation that is within 1% error from sine of theta, then less than 15 degrees will do that. But 
there is no across the board small angle that you can look at and say that's the small angle no matter what. And the reason for this is that approximations introduce error. And error accumulates at different rates for different things. In other words, different systems have less room for error. One example is noting that different configurations are more stable than others. This is a knife. And if I'm very careful and I want to balance it on this table on this side of the knife, I can do that. In fact, I don't really have to be all that careful in the first place. I can take this large angle here and it'll still find its way to that configuration because this is very stable. There's a lot of room for error. You can deviate that placement from perfection by quite a bit and still get the same result. Whereas if I were to try to balance it on the point here and be even more careful, <laughs> I'll try that at home. I can't reduce the error small enough to keep it in that configuration. And because of reasons like this, because different configurations require more precision or less error than others, and in this case, less error than me, a mere level 12 knife balancer can offer, I can't just say across the board that 0.1 radians is a small angle. But you can figure out a small angle for a specific case if you first specify the error that you're willing to accept. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you were new to the small angle approximation, I hope you learned a few things. If you're not and you knew all about it, I hope you still found this video entertaining. Let me know in the comments section if you did, and I'll see you guys there.